So far we have seen about the DES encryption, the key scheduling and the DES decryption. Before we progress into the next topic, let's conclude DES by analyzing the avalanche effect and the strength of DES. As usual, let's start the session with the outcomes. Upon the completion of the session, the learner will be able to Outcome number 1 Understand the avalanche effect in DES and outcome number 2, we will know the strengths of DES. Let's start with the avalanche effect in DES. What is this avalanche effect? Actually, this avalanche effect is a desirable property of any encryption algorithm. It's not just the stream cipher or the block cipher to hold this avalanche effect or it's not any particular algorithm to have this effect. Rather, it is recommended that any encryption algorithm should possess or should exhibit this property, that is the avalanche effect. Then what is this avalanche effect? I will give you the answer now. Let's take the encryption algorithm DES as an example. What is the input plain text size? It's 64 bit input, isn't it? And what's the output size? The cipher text size? It's 64 bits. So the 64 bit input is converted into 64 bit output. Now what's the avalanche effect? If there is one bit change in the input, see we have 64 bits input. Let's assume we are changing a bit, exactly one bit, somewhere in the input plain text. Because of the single bit change, the cipher text is drastically varying when you compare the previous cipher text and the cipher text after changing a bit. If they are drastically varying, then it exhibit a strong avalanche effect. Just imagine if you are changing one bit in the plain text and the number of bits in the cipher text are not changing drastically. Only two or three bits are changed. What happens? So it gives room for the attacker or the crypt analyst to know the patterns, isn't it? So if there is one bit modification in the input, then the output should be varying in many number of bits. If any encryption algorithm has that property, then that encryption algorithm exhibit avalanche effect. Do DES have strong avalanche effect? Yes, DES do have a very strong avalanche effect. And what's the proof for that? Let's assume there is one bit change in the plain text and obviously there are 34 bits change in cipher text on average. Just see, 64 bits are there. If there is only one bit change in the plain text, then 34, 34 is more than 32, which is half of the original size. That is the 64 bit input size. So one bit change in the plain text is leading to more than 50% of the bit changes in the cipher text on average. In other words, more than half of the number of bits are changed. Is the change in only plain text? No, the change can also be in the key as well. So avalanche effect means a small change or one bit change in the plain text or in the key should lead to drastic change or multiple number of bit changes in the cipher text. So a one bit change in the key is also leading to 35 bit changes in cipher text on average. So we can say that this exhibit a strong avalanche effect. We are done with dealing with the avalanche effect. Let's now focus on the strength of this. Basically, the strength of this is analyzed using the three features. Number one, the use of keys. Here we are using a 56 bit key for generating the round keys, which is of 48 bits. So the effective key size that we are using in DES is of 56 bits. So this is one of the criteria for analyzing the strength of DES. And the second one is the nature of the DES algorithm. The DES algorithm has a lot of key components in it, right? What are they? It has initial permutation. It has 16 rounds where every round there are some expansion tables, permutation tables, substitution tables, and we have a 32 bit swap function. And also we have the inverse initial permutation function. So the nature of the DES algorithm is one of the key criteria for analyzing the strength of the DES. And finally, we will see how effective this DES algorithm is against timing attacks. So that's what we are going to see now. Let's start with the first one, the use of 56 bit keys. It's clear that the original key that we input to the DES encryption algorithm is of 64 bits and the effective key size is 56 bits, which is converted. So the sub key size is of 56 bits. So when we say there are 56 bits in the key, it is a binary key, right? So it contains a lot of zeros and ones. How many zeros and ones it contains? 56 zeros and ones. Then how many possible keys are there? It's obviously 2 power 56 possible keys are there. 2 power 56 possible key means what's the exact value? The value will be 7.2 into 10 power 16 keys. Just see the key space is big. 
these many keys that is 7.2 into 10 power 16 keys are there then is brute force attack easy what is a brute force attack attempting all possible keys to know the key isn't it suppose if the key space is having 10 keys then if we keep trying the first key if we are successful then we have found out the key if we are not successful then we are going to the next key that is the second key third key fourth key till we find the exact key if the key space is small it's easy to attack it's easy to break using brute force attack think if the key space is large like this obviously a brute force attack appears impractical so we can say that this is effective against brute force attack why the main reason is the key space that has to be searched is large enough like this let's take there is a computer or a machine where that machine can perform one des encryption per microsecond so per microsecond that computer or that computing device is doing one encryption that is des encryption per microsecond how much time it will take to break it or decipher it or to attack it so practically it takes more than a thousand years to break the cipher if we have a computing device where that computing device can perform one des encryption per microsecond then does it mean that DES is fully secure? No, DES is not secured actually. It can be easily broken when you use DES nowadays. And that's why we are thinking of the alternatives. The main thing to note here is if one DES encryption per microsecond is done by one machine, then it takes more than years. If we have a big computing environment or an infrastructure where multiple computing devices are searching for the limited key space what is given to that machine then it becomes easy, right? When concurrently systems execute to do this, then it can be easily broken. Not only this, I will also give you a few more interesting things about this desk. This desk has been proved as insecure because a desk cracker was developed with a cost lesser than $250,000. Even the documentation for this DES cracker was released publicly so that anyone can create their own desk cracker so that they can easily break the security offered by the DES algorithm. So the attack to break the DES took only less than 3 days to break it. So as I already mentioned, DES is not secured. So is there any alternatives for this? Yes, we have strong alternatives to DES, which is AES, which is the advanced encryption standards. We also have the concept of triple DES. So we are done with dealing the first analysis, the use of 56 bit keys. Let's now focus on the second one, which is the nature of DES algorithm. We know cryptanalysis should be tougher as far as any encryption algorithm is concerned. You know why cryptanalysis should be difficult? Because this cryptanalysis can be exploiting the characteristics of the DES algorithm. If we talk about the DES encryption algorithms, how many S boxes are there? We have 8 substitution boxes, right? So these 8 substitution boxes or substitution tables or simply S boxes are used in each iteration of the DES encryption algorithm. So there are 16 rounds. So obviously all 16 rounds are going to use all these 8 substitution tables or S boxes. And also these S boxes were not made public by the developers. When something is not made public, what happens? It gives a suspicion that these S boxes have some loopholes, isn't it? So there are some weaknesses in the S boxes. So any cryptanalyst or attacker can come to know that there is a weakness in the S box. So that's what the next point says that there are some weaknesses in the S boxes. And over the years, there are number of regularities and unexpected behaviors of the S-boxes have been discovered. So this is the scenario why we are not using this. And before we conclude, let's see the timing attack. What is a timing attack? This is an attack which gives some information about the key or the plain text. Means how long it takes a given implementation to perform decryptions on various ciphertext. Let's assume we have been given with a lot of ciphertext. Then how much time? This decryption is performed on various ciphertext. So this gives some idea about the nature of the encryption and the decryption process. So obviously the timing attack reveals some useful information about the encryption and the decryption algorithm. Because for different inputs it's going to take different time to perform the encryption and the decryption. And is DES really secure against timing attack? Yes, DES is actually fairly resistant to a successful timing attack. And not only DES, we have seen alternatives to DES. They are triple DES and AES, isn't it? So timing attack will ever be successful against DES or even the most widely used symmetric cipher or powerful algorithms such as the triple DES or AES. And that's it guys. 
I hope now you understood the avalanche effect in DES and we also have come to know about the strength of DES. In three aspects we have analyzed the strength. Number one, the use of 56 bit keys. Number two, the nature of the DES algorithm. And number three, the timing attack. And that's it guys. I hope the session is informative and thank you for watching.